वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल ऑफ यू सो लेट स्टार्ट डिस्कशन विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम लास्ट क्लास इफ रिमेम्बर वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट environmental chemistry in that environmental chemistry we, are, we have two different types of pollutions like uh, tropospheric pollution and stratospheric pollution in the tropospheric pollution we have seen about gaseous pollutants as well as the particulate pollutants now we will start with the next kind of discussion the stratospheric pollution so in the stratosphere the upper stratosphere consists of considerable amount of ozone layer that is ozone is present which is protecting us from the harmful uv radiations whose lambda is 255 nanometer coming from the sun these radiations cause skin cancer in humans therefore it is important to maintain the ozone shield that means whatever the ozone layer we have that ozone layer is actually protecting the uh, humans from the harmful uv radiations if the ozone layer is disturbed the uv radiation will directly hit our earth surface and obviously the human beings are going to be affected to great extent right formation of ozone that is quite important and understandable how the ozone is going to be formed formation of ozone if you observe carefully the ozone is going to be obtained by different sets of reactions like uh, we all know oxygen o2 molecule the o2 molecule whenever it is incident with the uv radiation it will be split out into oxygen atoms these nascent oxygen atoms will combine with the o2 molecule to form ozone o3 so these are the set of reactions happening ozone in the stratosphere is product of uv radiations acting on dioxin molecules the uv radiations split apart molecular oxygen into free oxygen atoms these oxygen atoms combine with the molecular oxygen to form ozone to form the ozone o3 so these are the set of reactions happening so continuously uv radiation is falling on the o2 molecule we are getting oxygen atoms those oxygen atoms react with the o2 molecule to form respect to ozone to form respect to ozone o2 gas gives rise to oxygen plus oxygen o2 gas plus oxygen will be giving respect to o3 that is how ozone is actually obtained right then if you can look at chlorofluorocarbons what are chlorofluorocarbons we also known as cfcs yes or no which we have discussed in the halogen and its uh, uh, haloalkanes and haloarenes as well like the cfcs these compounds are generally non reactive non flammable and they are not toxic they are not toxic in nature but they are going to be broken down by the uv radiations releasing the chlorine free radical and that chlorine free radical which is obtained that is going to be reacting with ozone to form clo dot plus o2 therefore the chlorine free radicals obtained whenever uv radiations were hit on chlorofluorocarbons they are responsible for the damage of ozone layer this is point or not compound cfc is also known as freons these compounds are non reactive non flammable non toxic they are not reactive they are not flammable non toxic but the main reason is main difficulty in handling those is cf2 cl2 whenever it is passed through uv radiation it will form the chlorine free radical and a cf2 cl free radical this chlorine free radical will react with ozone to form clo dot plus o2 gas that means ozone is actually affected by chlorine radical chlorine free radical once the cfcs are released into the atmosphere they get broken down by powerful uv radiations releasing chlorine free radical that chlorine free radical is responsible ultimately to break the ozone molecule to form oxygen and clo dot right and we are going to use the cfcs in the refrigerators as well as the acs and all so from those cf2 cl2 whatever the chlorofluorocarbons they are reaching they will be reaching the atmosphere and they will ultimately reach the stratosphere so that is how the ozone layer is going to be disturbed with the cf2 cl2 just look at the animation uv radiations are coming into they are stopped by ozone molecule if one of the uv radiation is going to hit the cf2 cl2 that chlorine free radical will actually react to the ozone to disturb the ozone layer you can see that or not once the uv radiation hit the cf2 cl2 that form the chlorine radical that chlorine radical react to the ozone to form the gap that means ozones have been affected that is how the ozone layer has been disturbed and that is how we we are going to be affected greatly 
with these UV radiations if we continually produce the chlorofluorocarbons. So that usage has to be reduced. In the summer season, nitrogen dioxide and methane react with the chlorine monoxide and chlorine atoms forming chlorine casings preventing much ozone depletion. That means like in the Antarctica, we have actually produced an ozone hole where you have no ozone layer present at that part. In different seasons, like in summer, in spring, as well as in the winter, there are different reasons why that hole, hole is actually formed. In the summer season, what is happening is nitrogen dioxide and methane react with the chlorine monoxide. The NO2 react with ClO dot and a Cl dot uh, and chlorine atoms forming chlorine sinks, preventing much ozone depletion. That means Whatever the ClO dot react with NO2, it forms ClO NO2. And chlorine free radical will react with CH4 to form CH3 and HCl. So more of chlorine sinks are going to be formed. The only reason which is up, which is uh, responsible for the cleavage of, like for the disturbance of ozone layer is chlorine radicals. So in summer season, nitrogen dioxide and methane react with chlorine monoxide. Reaction one and chlorine atoms. Reaction two forming chlorine sinks, preventing much ozone depletion. In the winter, what happens? Special types of clouds called polar stratospheric clouds provide surface on which the chlorine nitrate formed gets hydrolyzed to form hypochlorous acid. So ultimately, you are generating respect to chlorine free radicals or the species which is having a tendency to produce the chlorine free radicals. In winter, there are some special counts over Antarctica. Because of these crowds, again, the hypochlorous acid is going to be formed, again, which is responsible for chlorine radicals. And in the spring, when sunlight returns to Antarctica in the spring, the sun's rays warms, uh, breaks up the clouds and HOCl and Cl2 are fertilized by sunlight as given in the reactions 1 and 2. Again, we are generating respect to Cl dot. Ultimately, what you can say, students, ultimately, whatever might be the season, Okay, the CL dot is responsible for ozone layer depletion. Ozone layer depletion. Right? Is that point clear to everyone or not? Yes, sir. Yes, yes right. Very good. The chlorine radical that's formed initiates the chain reaction for the ozone depletion. So they are responsible for the depletion of ozone layer. And this is nothing but the ozone hole. Effects of depletion of ozone layer. With the depletion of ozone layer, more UV radiation filters into the troposphere. Yes or no? Because some layer is protecting us from the UV radiation. If that layer is disturbed, obviously more UV radiation comes into the earth surface. And UV radiation leads to different kinds of effects like aging of skin. That depends upon the body structure and all, like uh, what type of uh, person he is and how his body is and how the UV radiation can affect him. So these are some of the difficulties or some of the uh, problems which we can observe because of this UV radiations. Aging of skin, cataract, so sunburning, sunburning is a normal issue. Skin cancer, killing of many phytoplankton and damaging to the fish productivity. So these are all the different different uh, effects. These are all the different different effects which we can see because of the depletion of ozone layer. Right students, then comes the next type of pollution like water pollution. So pollution of water originates from human activities again. So whatever the pollution we are creating, all whatever the pollution we are seeing in our daily lives, for all of them, we are majorly responsible as of no humans. So pollution of water originates again from human activities. Easily identified source of uh, source or place of pollution is called point source. Example, municipal and district discharge pipes where pollutants enter the water source. Like if you can identify the source like from where the disturbance is actually happening, from where the water is getting polluted, that is nothing but the point source. Like you can see where the 
a harmful water is actually mixing with the pure water or drinking water non point source of pollution are those where the source of pollution cannot be easily identified you cannot know where the pollution is actually happening like agricultural runoff from farm animals and crop plants acid rain storm water drainage from streets parking lots and lawns i saw no point source and non point source are two different points from where you can just actually have the water pollution point source means where you are actually uh, seeing the municipal and industrial discharge pipes where the pollution enters the water source that is a single point where the pollution is actually happening non point source are not like a point source they are not identifiable easily different different reasons and different different activities can be leading to the respect to water pollution from the non point source of pulpit causes of water pollution first one is pathogens the most serious water pollutants are disease causing agents this is very very like uh, commonly understandable statements the most serious water pollutants like the water if unknowingly we drink the water thinking it is a pure water and if that water contains some bacteria or virus then obviously they are going to be entering the body and obviously because of that we are going to be affected the most serious water pollutants are disease causing agents called pathogens pathogens include bacteria and other organisms that enter water from the domestic sewage and animal excreta because of these what you are going to have what you are going to have we are going to have different kinds of diseases organic wastes organic matter such as leaves grass trash etc pollute water as a consequence of runoff and you can see the large population of bacteria decomposes organic matter present in water they consume oxygen dissolved in water in cold water dissolved oxygen can reach a concentration up to 10 ppm that is 10 parts per million so this is actually happening again organic waste such as leaves grass trash they also going to pollute the water or not similar to the pathogens obviously bacteria virus they are obviously a greater contribution to the water pollution the second type is actually organic wastes and they also have the respective uh, contribution to the pollution of respective water and we can have different different chemical pollutants eutrophication can also happen all these sequences can be there chemical pollutants what are different chemical pollutants which you can have like from the industries majorly water soluble inorganic chemicals water soluble inorganic chemicals that includes heavy metals such as cadmium mercury nickel water soluble if a particular chemical is soluble in water and if it is of heavy metal like cadmium mercury nickel these are generally water soluble they constitute an important class of pollutants and solubility means that depends upon solubility depends upon hydration and enthalpy so generally chemicals that include heavy metals such as cadmium mercury nickel they are actually soluble in water because of that what is going to happen because of that you will be having more pollution causing to the respective water source eutrophication the process in which nutrient enriched water bodies the process in which nutrient enriched water bodies support a dense plant population which kills animal life by depriving it of oxygen and results in subsequent loss of biodiversity that is called of eutrophication what do you mean by that that means the process in which nutrient enriched water bodies if the water body has more nutrients they can support a plant life on the surface you can see on the uh, small pond also you can see lot of plants growing on if lot of like we have water body on on the surface we have lot of plants growing on what happens then obviously the oxygen gas cannot be going and dissolving in the water that means the dissolved oxygen in the water is going to be reduced because of the decrease in the dissolved oxygen what is going to happen the aquatic life will be affected and obviously the biodiversity gets affected the process in which nutrient enriched water bodies support a dense plant population which kills animal life by depriving it of oxygen and results in subsequent lot of biodiversity that is said to be eutrophication and this is how you can see the eutrophication this was a water body a fresh water source
like pollutants containing detergents and agricultural waste like phosphates are dumped in the fresh water so because of them nutrients are there so algae can be growing because of that growth of algae what is going to happen on the surface killing of aquatic life form why because the dissolved oxygen content that has been decreased yes or no the dissolved oxygen content that has been decreased because of that ultimately the biodiversity is going to be affected so that's why the waste stage has to be reduced water pollution is not acceptable at all it has to be controlled at all the conditions international standards for drinking water for fluoride ion like for different different kinds of ions what is a uh, condition like what is the limit up to what limit we can have that particular element or the metal ion or any type of ion that is given by the international standards fluoride ion concentration deficiency in drinking water causes diseases such as tooth decay soluble fluoride is often added to drinking water to bring its concentration up to 1 ppm or 1 gram per decimeter cube what do you mean this fluoride ion concentration deficiency in drinking water causes diseases such as tooth decay so we require fluoride ion its deficiency will be causing the tooth decay soluble fluoride is often added to drinking water to bring its concentration up to 1 ppm but there will be limit however f minus ion concentration above 2 ppm causes a brown mottling of teeth at the same time excess fluoride over 10 ppm causes harmful effect to bones and teeth harmful effect to bones and teeth so excess it should not be there it should be near to 1 ppm only the f minus ions make the enamel on the teeth much stronger by converting hydroxy apatite that is ca3po4 taken twice dot caoh taken twice the enamel on the surface of teeth into much harder fluoroapatite ca3po4 taken twice dot caf2 whatever the fluoride you are going to add know that fluoride has a greater tendency to develop new intramolecular force of attraction with ca plus 2 ion when compared to the hydroxide ion because ca plus 2 caoh taken twice ca plus 2 and oh minus ions have electrostatic force of attractions whenever you add a fluoride ion the def minus because of greater charge density it has a greater tendency to develop the interaction with ca plus 2 and that is going to form ca3po4 taken twice dot caf2 instead of ca3po4 taken twice dot caoh taken twice so the enamel on the surface of teeth is going to become harder because of the formation of respect to fluoroapatite by converting the hydroxy apatite that is why fluoride ions are required lead international standards for the drinking water the prescribed upper limit concentration of lead in drinking water is 50 ppb 50 ppb means what 50 parts per billion parts per billion yes or no so lead is highly dangerous so 50 ppb that has to be the upper limit for the lead in the drinking water lead can damage kidney liver reproductive system all these can be affected by lead sulfate ion excessive sulfate like greater than 500 ppm in drinking water causes laxative effect otherwise at moderate level, moderate levels it is harmless like sulfate should not be greater than 500 ppm up to 500 ppm only it, its concentration should be there nitrate ion the maximum limit of nitrate in drinking water is 50 ppm sulfate is 500 ppm it should not be greater than 500 excess nitrate in drinking water can cause diseases such as blue baby syndrome so you will be having blue baby syndrome and that is actually caused due to nitrate maximum prescribed concentration of some metals in the drinking water so these points you have to remember students like which metal has to be Uh, present up to what extent and how much ppm iron 0.2 ppm manganese 0.05 aluminum 0.2 copper 3 zinc 5 cadmium 0.005 so this is how much a particular metal can be present in the drinking water more than this will be leading to different kinds of diseases is everything clear so far okay. yes sir yes right very good
the next kind of pollution is soil pollution the, in the soil pollution what you can observe soil pollution in the solid pollution what you can see is it is a like a major land degradation is going to got degradation of land will be happening why due to the presence of some chemicals what chemicals we can say xenobiotic chemicals or some other alternatives happening in the natural soil environment soil pollution is also is just a degradation of land because of the presence of different chemicals known as xenobiotic chemicals soil pollution as a part of land degradation is caused by presence of xenobiotic or human made chemicals or other alteration in the natural soil environment open dumps often serve as the uh, breeding ground for rats and flies rainfall causes leaching of toxic substances so this is how if you do the open dumping that will actually disturb the environment and soil is going to be getting polluted you can see the animation open dumps or not at all safety pesticides are basically synthetic toxic chemicals with ecological repercussions the repeated use of same or similar pesticide give rise to pests that are resistant to that group of pesticides and thus making the pesticides ineffective like the same type of pesticide if you use again and again again and again obviously whatever the uh, insects we have they will get habituated to that particular pesticide or not like if you are taking the same type of antibiotic every time like if the doctor suggests to the antibiotic for 5 days but you have taken the antibiotic for 2 days and you feel like your fever has been reduced and you are good now and that's why you have stopped the antibiotic and third day you are fine but fourth day again if you have the same sensation of the fever or the infection then what you are going to do so you think of again i'll be continuing for three more days then what actually happens is whatever the disease you have whatever the microorganisms which are entered in your body they actually develop the resistance toward that particular whatever the medicine you are taking so whatever the duration has been suggested like three days or five days you have to continue that even though your uh, disease has been cured in the first day or second day if not whatever the left out bacteria we have that will be getting the capacity to like that will be having resistance towards that particular drug okay same thing pesticides are basically synthetic toxic chemicals with ecological repercussions is in the same way how we take the disease like a drug to cure the particular disease in the same way we will be having the insecticides to protect our farm the repeated use of same or similar pesticide gives rise to pests that are resistant to that group of pesticides yes or no thus making the pesticides ineffective so you should not use the repeated uh, pesticide again and again you have to change it so this is a level like molecular level then aquatic fish small fish large fish largest fish largest fish and human being we keep ourselves among the top then comes the industrial waste what kind of industrial waste you can think of industrial waste is a two, uh, two classification like biodegradable waste and non biodegradable waste biodegradable means that can be actually degraded by the natural uh, natural process happening inside a, a respect to earth but like biological different different biological activities are happening to degrade that particular wastage but non biodegradable means like plastics uh, e waste iron waste metallic waste we have discussed those right they are not biodegradable biodegradable waste are generally uh, generated by cotton mills food processing units paper mills and the textile factories these are the factories from which you can, from where you can get the biodegradable wastes so they are not actually producing the greatest wastage but there are many other factories can you think of any factories which can produce the non biodegradable wastes like you can say thermal power plants thermal power plants uh, they are going to be the producing like electricity right we everyone need electricity 
whatever you are doing at your home, you need the electricity. And the major uh, source of generating electricity is from the thermal power plants by heating the fossil fuels that produce different kinds of particulate pollutants like ash. So that is a non-biodegradable. Non-biodegradable waste are generated by thermal power plants which produce ash, generated uh, integrated iron and steel plants which produce blast furnace slag and a steel melting slag, industrial manufacturing, alumina, aluminium, zinc and copper produced mud and tailings. Fertilizer industries produce gypsum. All these are going to be the non-biodegradable waste or not? All these are going to be respect to non-biodegradable wastes. Generally, those non-biodegradable wastes are produced from these kind of industries. Whereas cotton mills and all, they produce the biodegradable wastes. And what are the strategies to control environmental pollution? A screen tailing of mercury is going to seen whenever the sticking of mercury is happening on the sides of the test tube. Okay. Strategies to control the environmental pollution, like what type of mechanisms are there, what are the different reactions we have, in, including the tailing of mercury, that we'll discuss with the reactions of ozone with mercury. Like ozone reacts with the mercury to form HEO and O2. That HEO will again convert to HG back. So those reactions we'll discuss in P block. Next type is strategies to control environmental pollution, like waste management. Solid waste is not the only waste which you see in your household garbage box. We can have waste management means from where you are getting the different kinds of waste that you have to know first and how these uh, wastes obtained from different different sources that have been dumped, that has to be a second activity. Like you will be producing waste from homes, schools, offices, as well as hospitals. These are just a few, these are just a few sources from where you can just collect the waste. These are a few major sources. Like from the homes, whatever the waste we get from schools, from offices and also from the hospitals. The offices just a very less number of waste has been given, but you will be having a lot of waste from industries as well. So biodegradable, you have to keep in a different types of different colored dustbin. Recyclable, you have to keep in a different kind of dustbin. And non-biodegradable and which are again toxic, here they have to be kept in a different kind of dustbin. This is just a way if everyone can follow these particular things, then, then only the change can be seen over a long time. Okay, if only a particular person is following all these activities, nothing is going to happen. No government can do a change. Only people, the people who are living in a particular nation, if everyone uh, behaves responsibly and uh, properly do the waste management, then only the change is going to happen. And different missions have been launched by the government of India, like uh, Swachh Bharat Mission, Urban, SBMU. The Swachh Bharat Mission, Urban, primarily aims at making urban India free from open defecation and achieving 100% scientific management of solid waste in the country. We have to achieve 100% solid waste management in the country. That is the main target of your Swachh Bharat Mission urban India and we have SBM like uh, Swachh Bharat Mission Gramin. Like for the Gramin also we have to bring the bring an improvement in the general quality of life in rural areas by promoting cleanliness and hygiene and eliminating open defecation. So Swachh Bharat Mission Gramin, Swachh Bharat Mission urban, they have different perspective and different ideologies and if everyone living in their respective areas follows these uh, set of guidelines, then only you, we can protect our environment for the future generations. Collection and disposal, domestic waste, 
like in collecting small bins and that can be taken out and that can be given in the dump yard disposable site like biodegradable waste and non biodegradable waste deposit biodegradable waste means you deposit in landfills and it will be generating respect to compost non biodegradable waste means you have to think of a way to recycle it if it is non biodegradable what's the point of keeping it in the landfill yes or no it is it won't be getting degraded easily so you have to keep that in the uh, recycling process then comes the concept of green chemistry green chemistry is a way of thinking and is about utilizing the existing knowledge and principles of chemistry and other sciences to reduce the adverse impact on environment on the environment whatever the human activities we are doing they are all going to be disturbing the ecosystem or biodiversity and green chemistry is actually a way of thinking and is about utilizing the existing knowledge and principles of chemistry not only chemistry and other scientific fields to reduce the adverse impact on environment right green chemistry is a production process that would bring about minimum pollution or deterioration of the environment like we have to improve technically as well as the environment should be protected carefully green chemistry in nutshell is a cost effective approach which involves reduction in material energy consumption and waste generation so energy consumption is a major cause like there are you know some countries i i won't be saying out the names and all but there are some areas where people will go out without switching on their ac for months you can just imagine like they will be going out keeping the ac on and they will come back after a month so that it feels cool when they enter the home that's all fine but look at the wastage so their country has excess of uh, electricity excess of energy but look at the wastage wastage is a wastage right for a month long the ac is running without any use without any purpose wastage is a wastage energy has been used so now if you are thinking of just for yourself that may be okay but look at the generation and overall world there are countries where even today they are not having the electricity they are not having the lights so everyone has to be taking the perspective and initiative to uh, use the minimum amount of energy because energy consumption we require electricity that is the major like that is obtained from thermal plants that from there you will be having a lot of wastage so energy consumption has to be minimized green chemistry in day to day life like a dry cleaning of cloths tetrachloroethylene ccl2 double bond ccl2 was earlier used as solvent for dry cleaning the compound contaminates the ground water and is also a suspected carcinogen that means cancer causing agent replacement of halogenated solvent by liquid co2 will result in less harm to ground water like if you replace that particular halogenated solvent by liquid co2 you will be having the less harm whatever the uh, harmful substances we have those has to be replaced with the less harmful substance and all those has to be replaced by less harmful substances bleaching of paper chlorine gas was used earlier for bleaching paper these days hydrogen peroxide was the suitable catalyst again to reduce the respective usage but chlorine gas was used earlier now we are using the hydrogen peroxide h2o2 synthesis of chemicals ethanol ch3cho is now commercially prepared by one step oxidation of ethene in the presence of ionic catalyst in aqueous medium with a yield of 90% you can just look at the ethanol ethanol ch3cho is now commercially prepared by one step oxidation of ethene in the presence like ethene means ch2 double bond ch2 ethene oxidation that means plus o2 in the presence of some catalyst it will form ch3cho 90% the synthesis of chemicals we have to choose the simplest way and easiest way where you will be ha having least number of uh, dangerous uh, wastes like dangerous biodegradable or non biodegradable wastes green solution to clean turbid water 
like a powder of kernel of tamarind seeds has been found to be an effective material to make municipal and industrial wastewater clean tamarind seeds you can just look at the nature nature itself provide everything okay we have to find which substance is used in what way and what was its activity it is non toxic biodegradable and a cost effective material this powder is usually uh, discarded as agricultural waste this powder is actually discarded as agricultural waste these are different different ways to actually protect our environment and we also have bod bod means what students biological okay bio chemical oxygen demand what do you mean by that the amount of oxygen required by microorganisms to oxidize the organic solutes present in very good so for clean water how much you will be having the bod clean water means generally bod should be around 5 ppm like polluted water will be having more pm more so bod will be something around 17 ppm these values we try to remember yes was he that's how the people in that particular area live okay for a month they are switching on the ac there was no current no no electricity bill it's all free okay so it's it's okay even though if it's free that doesn't mean you have to use it like uh, anything so you have to think of other areas like if you are using it in such a way for longer time again that place is going to be seeing the lack in the efficiency or not like that particular current so energy consumption you know how much current the ac will generate ac requires so more units so more is a wastage so you have to reduce the wastage and all so environmental chemistry is all about how the environment is actually disturbed and how we can save it by different different ways so this is all about your environmental chemistry let us start our discussion with the next chapter named uh, electrochemistry just a second electrochemistry means uh, we will be having major two perspectives in electrochemistry what are the two perspectives oxidation reduction oxidation reduction sure poison electrochemistry has two goals first one to convert the electrical energy into chemical energy so two perspectives it has electrochemistry deals with the interaction of chemical energy with electrical energy what is electrochemistry electrochemistry is the study of interaction of electrical energy with chemical energy so Uh, from this study of interaction of electrical energy with chemical energy we can study two things how the electrical energy can be collected converted to chemical energy and how the spontaneous chemical reactions can be generating the electrical energy from two ways you can actually understand we can actually think of how the electrochemistry can be analyzed two things are there what are two things conversion of electrical energy to chemical energy conversion of chemical energy to electrical energy conversion of chemical energy to electrical energy means spontaneous oxidation and reduction reactions are going to be happening to convert the respect to generate the respective electricity so conversion of uh, electrical energy to chemical energy that can be seen in electrolysis is electrolysis spontaneous or non spontaneous non spontaneous non spontaneous so delta g for electrolysis will be positive negative negative or positive Positive, positive, positive. Yes or no? Delta G should be positive because it is non-spontaneous in nature. What about chemical like uh, galvanic cell? Chemical energy is going to be converted to electrical energy. That is spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Spontaneous. That is spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Delta G is going to be negative for negative. that. Negative. Very good. So let us look at the reactions. Electrochemistry is a branch of physical chemistry. 
which deals with the study of interconversion of chemical energy and electrical energy electrochemical cell we can have galvanic cell or voltaic cell and electrolytic cell electrolytic cell delta g is positive and that means it is non spontaneous galvanic cell delta g is negative that means it is spontaneous the change in the gibbs free energy if it is negative that means gibbs free energy if it is decreasing that is going to be spontaneous gibbs free energy if it is increasing that is going to be non spontaneous chemical energy is converting into electrical energy in the galvanic cell and it is a spontaneous redox reaction electrical energy is converting into chemical energy in the electrolytic cell it is a non spontaneous redox reaction same oxidation and reduction are going to happen always oxidation occurs at anode reduction occurs at cathode but signs of anode and cathode are going to be say different electrolytic cell electrolytic cell what is the sign of anode and cathode galvanic cell what is the sign of anode and cathode electrolytic cell sign of anode is positively charged cathode is negatively charged galvanic cell anode is negatively charged cathode is positively charged we will discuss about the cell construction and all this is the basic idea which we are giving about the chapter or the basic introduction of electrochemistry so in this electrochemistry we will be discussing about these two types of cells majorly electrolytic cell and a galvanic cell after discussing about these two type of cells we will also understand we will also understand about uh, uh, different types of fuel cells dry cells and all and before going into these discussion we we should know the basic concepts like what is conductance conductivity molar conductance and all those perspectives so let us start like we have a car in the car we will be having uh, different different batteries how the batteries are going to work again there is some electrochemistry involved in that the cell is behaving like a galvanic cell how does that work so let us start with our discussion like uh, the first discussion is conductors substances which allow electric current to flow through them are called conductors substances which allow electric current to flow through them they are said to be conductors example if you take metals aqua solution of acids bases and salts fused salts and impure water etc these are all going to be called as conductors metals aqua solution of acids bases salts fused salts they are all said to be respect to conductors conductors means which can allow the flow of electric current to them if the flow of electric current is due to movement of ions then it is said to be what type of conductor ionic conductors electrolytic conductor if the flow of electric current is due to transfer of if the transfer of electric current is due to movement of electrons then it is said to be electronic metallic conductor metallic or electronic conductors conductors are of two types metallic conductors or electronic conductors electrolytic conductors or ionic conductors so we can also have mixed conductor okay third case is mixed conductor mixed conductor means due to both both metals and ions and electrons Electron. conductors are of two types metallic conductors or electronic conductors so you can take iron rod okay iron rod aluminum all those are metallic conductors electrolytic conductors you can take nacl aqua solution and mixture conductor you can take an example of sodium in liquid ammonia sodium in liquid ammonia right metallic conductor you can just see the flow of electricity or the flow of current is due to transfer of or movement of electrons electrolytic conductor you can see here molten nacl na plus cl minus ions are there molten nacl means we have only na plus and cl minus ions and those na plus cl minus ions whenever you supply the electric energy from the outside that is from the outer circuit you are producing the electric energy so current is flowing in this direction current flowing in this direction means electrons are moving opposite direction electrons are moving away from this rod means this rod is getting positive charge electrons are moving towards this rod means this rod is getting negative charge 
So the negatively charged Cl minus ions, they are moving towards positively charged electrode, which is nothing but anode. So due to motion of these ions, this solution is behaving as a conductor. That is why that is nothing but electrolytic conductor or ionic conductor. The ions are responsible for the transfer of current. That is why it is called as electrolytic conductor. Metallic conductor means flow of current is due to transfer of electrons. Electrolytic conductor means flow of uh, electricity, flow of current is due to like or transfer of current is due to movement of ions. Metallic conductor charge carriers of free electrons, electrolytic charge carriers of free ions. Metallic conductors flow of electricity takes place without any chemical change. If a current has been passed through some iron rod, there won't be any chemical change in the iron rod because electrons, free electrons are transferring. But if the same electricity is, is passed through NaCl solution, electrolysis may occur. So that is producing the chemical change. Yes or no? Electrolytic conductors, through them, if you pass the electricity, chemical change is produced where you can say electrolysis will occur. Electrolysis occurs. No transfer of matter takes place. Like transfer of matter takes place in the form of ions in the electrolytic. Resistance is due to vibrations of kernels. Metal kernels, they are going to be vibrating or not? Like in a metal iron rod, we will be having at different, different lattice sites we have. We at a different, different lattice sites, we will be having specific uh, uh, metal kernels. They are going to be vibrating about their mean positions. Because of those vibrations, what is going to happen? The flow of electrons that is going to be disturbed. Yes or no? The transfer of electron that is going to be disturbed. So resistance is due to vibrations of uh, kernels in the metallic conductors and resistance is due to interionic attraction and viscosity of medium in the electrolytic conductor. For just to imagine the case, like Na plus ion has to move. In the NaCl aqua solution, Na plus is moving. If Na plus ion is moving, if that Na plus is attracted by oppositely charged ions greatly, then the movement of Na plus increased or decreased? Decreased. 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 If the movement is decreased, whenever the mobility is decreased, conductivity decreases. Same thing in the resistance. Like if you think of metallic conductor, at every lattice side we have the metal conductor and free electrons was to move in this direction if the vibrations are increasing obviously the free electrons are stopped to go or not this free electron wants to move but the vibration of metal kernel if it is increasing obviously the obstruction to the flow of electron is increasing because of that the electron cannot move easily so what happens the metallic conductor the resistance increases with increase in temperature why Vibrations increase. Yes, because of increased vibration, increased vibrations. And the resistance decreases with increasing temperature because of increased mobility. Increased mobility. Faraday's loss of electrons are not followed in metallic conductors, whereas Faraday's loss of electrons are followed in the electrolytic conductors. What are Faraday's loss? And uh, what are the details in the Faraday's loss? We are going to study there. Example of metallic conductors are all the metals. Examples of electrolytic conductors are aqua solutions of acids and salts, right? Electrolytic conductance, how we can define the electrolytic conductance, students? Electrolytic conductance, in that topic, we'll be having resistance, resistivity, conductance, conductivity, molar conductance, molar conductivity, cold drops loss, and all. Resistance, it is a property of metallic and electrolytic conductors by virtue of which it opposes flow of current. Ohm's law, from the Ohm's law we know R is 1 by G, where R is expressed in Ohm. What is G? Conductance. 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 So it is a property. Conductance is a property which favors the flow of current. Uh, favors the flow of current. Resistance is a property which opposes the flow of current. And they are just reciprocal to each other. R is equals to 1 by G. And what is R? R resistance of the conductor is directly proportional to Length of conductor divided by area of cross section of the conductor. So, one side we have resistance R, whose unit is in ohm. Other side we have length by area. So, meter by meter square or centimeter by centimeter square. So, units are different on both the sides. So, to make this proportionality a mathematical equation, I have to insert a constant R is equals to rho into L by A, where rho is nothing but your resistivity. Rho is nothing but your resistivity. 
So R is equals to rho into L by A. R is equals to rho into L by A. So I can bring this rho to the other side and R to the other side. 1 by rho is equals to 1 by R into L by A. 1 by rho is nothing but connectivity K. K is equals to 1 by R is nothing but G, G into L by A. L by A is also known as cell constant, which is indicated with G star. So K is equals to G into G star, where G star is equals to L by A. That is also called as cell constant. That is also called as cell constant. Whatever the cell it might be, the cell constant is going to be same or not. Yes or no? Like I am filling a particular electrolytic solution in this particular cell. The area of cross section and the length of this particular cell, they are same. Length and area that their sizes no. Whatever the solution you feel inside that, that solution is not going to change the length or area of cross section. Yes or no? So G yes. star is going to help by that do not depend upon the type of electrolytic solution we have taken. So resistivity, rho is nothing but resistivity, K is nothing but conductivity. G is equal to 1 by R, unit of G, conductance is Mo or Ohm inverse or Simons, Mo or Ohm inverse or Simons. Specific resistance or resistivity, rho, the resistance R of a conductor is directly proportional to its length and inversely proportional to its area of cross section. R is directly proportional to L by A, so R is equal to rho into L by A. R is equal to rho into L by A means rho is equal to R into A by L, rho is equal to R into A by L. Like if you take one centimeter length and one centimeter square area of cross section, in that particular, if you have a particular metallic connector, like uh, in that particular volume, if you have a particular electrolytic connector, then that particular electrolytic connector will be offering a specific resistance, right? That is nothing but your resistivity. Understand this point carefully. I have taken length is equal to one centimeter and area of cross section what? L is equal to one centimeter, area of cross section. 1 centimeter into 1 centimeter that is equal to 1 centimeter square. So, volume is equal to what? In this particular container, we have the specific electrolytic solution. So, volume is equal to area one into length 1, one centimeter, centimeter cube. So, then what is rho? Rho is equals to R into R into A by, A by L. L. That is rho is equals to R when V is equal to 1 centimeter cube. Can I say? Specific resistance is the resistance offered by the electrolytic solution present in one centimeter cube of volume. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is how we can define specific resistance is the resistivity. Uh, specific resistance or resistivity is the resistance offered by a conductor, electrolytic conductor present in one centimeter cube of volume. If L is equal to 1 centimeter, A is equal to 1 centimeter square, then rho is equal to R. So volume is equal to 1 centimeter cube. Therefore, resistance offered by 1 centimeter cube electrolytic solution is known as resistivity or specific resistance. Specific resistance. Same way, can I talk in terms of conductivity K? What is K? R is equal to rho into L by A. So I can write 1 by rho is equal to 1 by R into L by A. That is nothing but K is equal to G into L by A. So length 1 centimeter, area of cross section 1 centimeter square. So volume is equal to 1 centimeter cube. So can I say K is equal to G? So conductivity or specific conductance is the conductance offered by electrolytic solution present in 1 centimeter cube of volume. Unit of rho. What is the unit of rho? R is equal to rho into L by A. R is equal to rho into L by A. So rho is equals to R into A by L. So rho is equal to R into A by L ohm into centimeter square divided by centimeter. So ohm centimeter or ohm meter. So unit of rho is ohm centimeter. Unit of K will be ohm inverse centimeter inverse. Specific connectance or conductivity K. Specific connectance how we can define? K is equals to 1 by rho. Yeah, K is equals to 1 by rho, but how we can define it, like how we can measure it? It is the conductance offered by an electrolytic solution present in 1 centimeter cube volume. It is defined as the reciprocal of a specific resistance, K is equals to 1 by rho. 
how to measure it k is equal to g into g star ohm inverse centimeter inverse simon centimeter inverse or mo centimeter inverse these are the respective units same units which you have written earlier if l is equal to 1 cm area is equal to 1 cm square therefore volume is equal to 1 cm cube solution hence the conductivity of a solution is defined as the conductance offered by 1 cm cube of electrolytic solution what is conductivity conductivity is the conductance offered by 1 cm cube of the electrolytic solution conductance offered by 1 cm cube of the electrolytic solution then comes the cell constant cell constant nothing but l by a cell constant l by a will be having the units of 1 by centimeter or 1 by meter g star is equal to 1 by a its unit is centimeter inverse or meter inverse for the same cell its value will be same and it is independent of the concentration of electrolyte use it doesn't matter what type of electrolytic uh, solution we have taken and what is its concentration the length and area of cross section of that particular electrolytic cell that is going to be same yes or no so for the same cell its value will be same and it is independent of the concentration of the electrolyte used molar conductivity or molar conductance how we define this molar conductance or molar conductivity how can we calculate this molar conductance or molar conductivity what is any can anyone define what is molar conductance or molar conductivity molar means molarity term yes like molar conductance or molar conductivity it is defined as the conductance of all the ions produced by one mole of electrolyte it is defined as conductance of all the ions produced by one mole of electrolyte present in the given volume of solution okay understand this point carefully it is defined as conductance of all the ions produced by one mole of electrolyte present in given volume of solution let us take the given volume be v let capital m be the molarity okay so what is your conductivity k what is conductivity what is a conduct like let molarity be capital m molarity be capital m and volume be vml what is conductance conductance offered by 1 cm cube is nothing but 1 ml or not yes sir yes sir conductance offered by 1 ml of solution what is this what is the conductance offered by 1 ml of solution conductivity conductivity but how much ml is there molar conductivity or molar conductance you have to calculate it is defined as the conductance of all the ions produced by one mole of electrolyte one mole of electrolyte present in given volume let how much volume you have considered vml conductance offered by 1 ml of solution is k conductivity what is the conductance offered by by vml k into v by vml obviously it is k into v conductance offered by one ml of solution is k conductance offered by vml of solution is k into v molarity is m molarity m means can i say m moles of m moles of solute solute is in how many ml molarity is nothing but number of moles of number of moles of solute by volume of solution in liter so can i say molarity m means can i say m moles of solute is in 1000 ml 1000 ml of solution so one mole of solute because molar conductivity is defined for one mole it is defined as a conductance of all the ions produced by one mole of electrolyte present in the given volume one mole of electrolyte present in the given volume so one mole of one mole of solute will be present in how many volume 1000 1000 by m 1000 by m yes or no 
so for one mole of solute we will be having 1000 by m ml of that particular solution because m moles of solute is present in 1000 ml this is a respect to one mole of solution present in given volume so 1000 by m so conductance offered by 1 ml is k conductance offered by v ml is k into v conductance offered by 1000 by 1 ml 1000 by m ml k into 1000 by k into 1000 by m k into 1000 by m by m so this was the formula molar conductivity or molar conductance you can say molar conductance or molar conductivity so you can use the symbols lambda m or delta reverse vm so that is equal to k into 1000 divided by m what was the unit unit is very important ohm inverse centimeter square mole inverse what is the unit ohm inverse centimeter square mole, mole inverse. inverse this is the formula you have to use when k is in ohm inverse centimeter inverse molar conductance is equals to k into 1 by 1000 m ohm inverse meter square mole inverse this is the formula i have to use where k is in ohm inverse meter inverse understood logic or not molar See. connectivity is equal to k into 1000 by m molar connectivity is equal to k into 1000 by m ohm inverse centimeter square mole inverse that is the unit of molar conductance or molar connectivity when conductivity is in ohm inverse centimeter inverse instead of ohm inverse centimeter inverse if conductivity is given in ohm inverse meter inverse then you have to use k into 1 by 1000 into molarity k into 1 by 1000 into molarity ohm inverse meter square mole inverse that is going to be the respective unit that is going to be a respective unit right Connectance of 1 centimeter cube solution that is 1 ml of solution is k. Connectance of V centimeter cube solution or V ml is k into V that is molar connectivity. Let molarity be m means m mole of electrolyte is present in 1000 centimeter cube. So 1 mole of electrolyte present in 1000 by m centimeter cube. From 1 into I can write molar conductance is equal to k into 1000 by m units. Molar conductance is in ohm inverse centimeter square mole inverse ohm inverse you can also write psi uh, psi month centimeter square mole inverse more centimeter square mole inverse this is used when k is in k is in ohm inverse centimeter inverse if k is in ohm inverse meter inverse then you have to multiply with the 10 power 6 in the denominator so if k is in ohm inverse meter inverse then you have to convert the respect to centimeter cube to meter cube right so there you are going to have Molar kinetic is equal to k into 1000 by m into 10 power 6. That means you will be having k into molar kinetic is equal to k divided by 1000 into molarity. Ohm inverse meter square mole inverse that is the unit of molar conductance or molar connectivity and k is in ohm inverse meter inverse. This is the formula. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Everything is going to be similar in the equivalent connectance or equivalent connectivity also. In the molar conductance, how we have defined? It is defined as a conductance offered by all the ions produced by one mole of electrolyte in the given volume. In the equivalent condition, equivalent connectivity or equivalent conductance, the one mole of electrolyte that has to be uh, replaced with one gram equivalent of electrolyte. Instead of molarity, you have to use normality. Same, everything is going to be same. Equivalent conductance, how we can define? Equivalent conductance is equals to k into 1000 divided by normality ohm inverse instead of uh, ohm inverse centimeter square instead of mole inverse you have to write gram, gram equivalent inverse. inverse here k is in ohm, ohm inverse centimeter, centimeter inverse. inverse very good equivalent current is equal to k by in 1000 into normality 1000 into normality ohm inverse meter, meter square, square gram equal gram inverse and k is in ohm, ohm inverse, inverse meter inverse. 
very good sir. let us take molar equivalent conductivity so equivalent conductivity is equals to k into 1000 divided by normality we have right normality is equals to molarity into n factor can i write this yes sir normality is equals to molarity into n factor n factor so what is k into 1000 by molarity this is nothing but molar conductance. molar conductance so equivalent conductance is equals to molar conductance divided by n factor this is how they are going to be related equivalent conductance is equals to molar conductance divided by n factor this is the relation between them same formula it is defined as the conductance of all the ions produced by one gram equivalent of electrolyte in the given volume of solution one gram equivalent of electrolyte in the given volume of solution it produces how much conductance that is nothing but your equivalent conductance or equivalent conductivity equivalent conductance is equal to k into v same type of derivation you are going to have equivalent conductance is equal to k into 1000 by normal d whereas equivalent conductance is in ohm inverse centimeter square gram equivalent inverse this is the unit when k is in ohm inverse centimeter inverse if k is in ohm inverse meter inverse then you will have 1000 in the denominator so k into 10 power minus 3 by n means k by 1000 into normal d so equivalent conductance is equal to ohm inverse meter square gram equivalent inverse ohm inverse meter square gram equivalent inverse is that clear students yes sir. yes sir. yes yes right very good so this is animation in, in, uh, explaining the same relationship between equivalent conductance and molar conductance equivalent conductance is equals to molar conductance divided by n factor the relation equivalent conductance is equals to molar conductance by n factor because normality is equals to molarity into valence factor normality is equals to molarity into valence factor based on that you can go with this relation let us solve some questions the resistance of one normal solution of a salt is 50 ohm calculate the equivalent conductance of the solution if two platinum rods in the solution are 2.1 cm apart and each having an area of 4.2 cm square length like uh, two platinum rods there is one rod here another rod here and uh, this area is 4.2 cm square this rod also 4.2 cm square one normal solution of salt is 50 ohm resistance there is some salt solution resistance is 50 ohm calculate the equivalent conductance equivalent conductance you have to calculate equivalent conductance and they are talking in terms of centimeter so equivalent conductance is equals to k into 1000 divided by normality this is the formula k should be in k is in ohm inverse centimeter, centimeter inverse. inverse so they have said that in between these two electrodes there was some solution and the they are separate by 2.1 centimeter that means volume of that solution is how much like area we can calculate length also given so I can use the direct formula R is equals to R is equals to rho into L by A. So 1 by rho is equals to 1 by R into L by A. 1 by rho is nothing but connectivity. K is equals to 1 by rho. 1 by uh, 1 by rho is equal to K. 1 by R is 1 by 50, 50. ohm into L by A 2.1 divided 2 by 4.2 centimeter by centimeter square. So K value is how much? 1 by 100. 1 by 100 ohm inverse centimeter inverse so e equivalent conductance is equals to 1 by 100 okay. into 1000 in divided by normal one, one. one normal and unit is ohm inverse centimeter it's square gram, gram equivalent gram. so do the calculation that will be your answer 10 so, 10 okay 10 is the right answer So just a second, we'll start with other slides. Try to solve this question. Which of the following has highest molar connectivity? So, 
So given K value, look at the K value, specific connectivity is given in ohm inverse centimeter inverse, resistivity is given in ohm centimeter. So first is one, if you go with the molar connectance, molar connectance or molar connectivity, K into 1000 by molarity, what is the value of K? 2 into 10 power minus 2 into 1000 by molarity is 0 0.08 ohm inverse centimeter square mole inverse. Do the calculation. Second one, first one, 250. What is second one? Molar connectance is equal to K into 1000 by molarity. What is the value of K? K is 1 by 50. 1 by 50 into 1000 divided by molarity is how much? 0 0.1. So, 0, 0 gets cancelled. 100, 20, 200, 20 200. ohm inverse centimeter square mole inverse. So, which one is the highest? First one. Which of the following has highest molar connectivity means first solution. Right. The conductance of a solution AB measured by two parallel electrodes of area 100 centimeter square separated by 10 centimeter was found to be 0 0.0001 ohm inverse. Conductance they have given G is equal to 10 power minus 4 ohm inverse. Ohm inverse, right? G is equal to 10 power minus 4 ohm inverse. If volume enclosed between the two electrodes contains 0 0.5 molar of salt, what is the molar connectivity? They are asking about molar connectivity. So G they have given R is equals to rho into L by A. So 1 by rho is nothing but K. K is equal to 1 by R is nothing but G. G into L by A. K is how much? 10 power minus 4. 10 power minus 4 ohm inverse. 10 power minus 4 ohm inverse into L by A. Length is given as 10 centimeter. 10. By area of cross section, 100 centimeter square. So 10 1 by 10 again. 5. 10 power minus 5 ohm inverse centimeter inverse. That is nothing but your K value. Now, what they are asking us to calculate? Equivalent connectance. Equivalent or molar connectance? Molar connectivity or molar mm -hmm. connectance. So, K is given as 10 power ohm inverse centimeter inverse. So, molar connectance is equal to K into 1000 by molarity. So, what was the calculation then? K into 1000 by molarity. What is the molarity? 200, sir. K is how much? 10, K is 10, 10 power, power minus, minus 5. Into 1, 10 power 3. By, by 0 0.5. By 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.5 mole of salt. How much volume we have? Molarity is equal to 0 0.5 number of moles of solute by volume of solution. Volume of solution is how much? 100 centimeter square into 10 centimeter. That is nothing but 1000 centimeter square. 1000 centimeter cube. Yes or no? 1000 ml. 1 centimeter cube is equal to 1 ml. 1000 centimeter cube is equal to 1000 ml that is equal to 1 liter. So 1 liter. 0 0.5 mole by 1 liter is nothing but 0 0.5 molar. 0 0.5. So 10 power minus 2 divided by 5 into 10 power minus 1. That is 0 0.2. 1 by 5 is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 into 10 power minus 1. That is 0 0.02. Check out the calculation along with me. Okay. Don't just uh, blindly copy. Check out your answers as well. Got this or not, students? Yes, sir. K into 1000 by molarity. Molarity have calculated by calculating the like uh, volume, number of moles is given. So ultimately got the answer as 0 0.02. Next question. A conductivity cell contains 0 0.02 molar KCL solution and have resistance of 81 ohm and conductivity 0 0.00240 ohm inverse centimeter inverse. First KCL solution, let us talk with respect to KCL. Molarity how much? 0 0.02 molar. Resistance R is 81 ohm. 81. Conductivity K is 0 0.0024 ohm inverse, centimeter inverse respectively. Now the same cell is filled with a K2SO4, right? K2SO4. Yes, sir. And a 0 0.05 normality is 0 0.05 normal. Resistance is yes, 324 ohm. Calculate molar conductivity and equivalent conductivity. First, let us calculate equivalent conductivity because they have directly given normality. What is equivalent conductivity? Equivalent conductivity is equal K. to K into 1000 by, 1000 by N. N normality. Why I am using this formula? Because 
they are giving in ohm centimeter and all i saw no so k we have to find out in ohm inverse centimeter inverse for k to so4 what is k here r is equal to r of k to so4 is equals to k of k to so4 because k to so4 k is different when compared to k of kcl into l by a so k of k to so4 is how much uh, 1 by r of k to s4 r of k to s4 they have given 1 by r of k to s4 into l by a so r of k to s4 is uh, given l by a we have to cal mm. calculate l by a is not going to be depending upon type of solution same connectivity cell so r is equals to rho into l by a so l by a is equals to r by rho that is equals to r into k what is the value of r r of h uh, 81 No, no. The L by A, I am calculating with respect to KCL. R of KCL, we have to calculate, no? Because L by A value, I don't know. For K two S O four, for K two S O four, so conductivity I have to calculate. So using the formula R is equal to rho into L by A. That L by A, I am calculating from the KCL. So okay. R is how much? Eighty one ohm. Eighty one ohm into K is how much? Zero point one zero zero two four. Two four. Ohm inverse, centimeter inverse. Ohm inverse, ohm gets cancelled out. So K of K to S O four is one by R of K to S four. Resistance for K to S four is how much? Three twenty four ohm into L by A of L by A. It doesn't depend. It doesn't matter. L by A is constant for K C L as well as K to S four. Eighty one into zero point zero zero two four centimeter inverse. So this is nothing but your K. So therefore. Equivalent conductance is equals to K, eighty-one into twenty-four into ten power minus four divided by three twenty-four into thousand divided by normality is how much? Normality given as zero point zero five. That is five into ten power minus two. Do the calculation, all of you. Sixteen equivalent conductance minus the code the calculation perfectly 10 power minus 4 no, by 10 sir. power minus 4 for k of k to s so for c no ultimately equivalent conductance you measure equivalent conductance for the k to s4 81 into 24 into 1000 into 10 power minus 2 is 10 so you have to find out this value 81 into 24 into 10 divided by 324 into 5 by 1 times by 2 times 24 and 324 check out they may get cancelled out Eighty one twenty four gets cancelled out because eighty four three twenty right one time twelve twelve so equivalent conductance is twelve. What about the uh, molar conductance? Equivalent okay. conductance into n factor. What is the n factor for K two S O four? For salt, for salt, so magnitude of positive charge or negative charge that is nothing but your n factor. So twelve into two, that will be twenty four. Units are same. For equivalent conductance, ohm inverse. Equivalent conductance is in ohm inverse centimeter square gram equivalent inverse. Molar conductance is in ohm inverse centimeter square mole inverse. These are the respective units. Got it, students? How to calculate? Yes, sir. Okay, very simple questions. Just uh, we have to be a bit patient and do the calculation. A conductivity cell containing point two molar solution which has fifty ohm resistance and specific conductance given. If the same cell is filled with point five molar solution which has resistance, then calculate the same type of question. Take it as homework. Same type of question, right? So nothing has been changed. We take this particular question as homework. Same question repeated so that you can do the problem and all. Then. Factors affecting the electrolytic so, uh, electrolytic conductance. What are the different factors which can affect the electrolytic conductance? There are a few factors like polarity of the solvent, temperature, viscosity of the medium, hydration, as well as interionic attraction. Interionic attraction. If attraction between one ion and other ion is great, what happens to conductance? Decreases. Decreases because interionic attraction increases means the movement of ions decreases, so conductance decreases. Polarity of solvent. If the dielectric constant of the solvent is high, then what happens to the conductance? Increases. If the dielectric constant of the solvent is high, then what happens is degree of dissociation will be high. 
dielectron dielectric constant high means you can say that like charges are closest and thus to gain stability they are going to be dissociating greatly so interionic attraction increases means mobility of ions will be decreasing mobility of ions decrease means conductance will conductance will decrease polarity of solvent dielectric constant increase means degree of dissociation increases dielectric constant is directly proportional to degree of dissociation higher dielectric constant means higher degree of dissociation higher the dissociation more number of ions more will be the conductivity very good what about viscosity viscosity means like a friction resistance to resistance for the flow of the ions so viscosity of the medium is high means mobility of ions will be decreased because resistance is high so obviously conductance is going to be decreasing because mobility of ions has been decreased temperature with increase in temperature the movement of the ions will be high mobility of ions high obviously the conductance will be high kinetic energy of the ions increases with increase in temperature so mobility of ions increases so conductance increases hydration or solvation hydration increase means effective size of ion increases hydration is increasing means effective size of ion increasing so mobility of ions will be decreasing so conductance will be decreasing because if you do if you go with the li plus li plus gaseous li plus lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium li plus na plus k plus rb plus cs plus all you take the gaseous ions what is the conductance order cs plus li plus cs plus will be greater or rb plus greater or k plus greater or na plus greater or li plus greater i am taking about gaseous scenario let plus greater gaseous gaseous means no hydration fission okay aqueous in the aqueous solution they have hydration yes or no li plus uh, aqueous na plus aqueous k plus aqueous rb plus aqueous cs plus aqueous which can be easily moving cs plus would be easily moving cs plus would be easily moving this is the order of conductivity order of conductance because this is the order of size order of size in gaseous medium but in the aqueous medium the size will be different in aqueous medium like li plus because of higher charge density li plus aqueous size then na plus aqueous then k plus aqueous then rb plus aqueous and then cs plus okay in the aqueous medium the size is going to be highest for li plus because li plus because of higher charge density it is surrounded by maximum number of uh, respect to water molecules or solvent molecules right students example size of li plus aqueous greater than na plus aqueous greater than rb k plus then rb plus and cs plus so size is going to be decreasing means conductance will be increasing size will be decreasing means conductance will be increasing and uh, conductance order will be li plus 2 cs plus this is the order of conductance based on size right dilution this concept of dilution is interesting upon dilution you can just remember this fact we will understand it what the fact is the upon dilution the conductance the equivalent conductance the molar conductance increases the specific conductance itself is decreasing okay what decreases upon dilution specific conductance decreases because of dilution whereas conductance equivalent conductance molar conductance all these three will be increasing let us now understand first how the conductance will be increasing conductance on increasing the dilution conductance increases we have to analyze again with respect to strong electrolyte as well as with respect to weak electrolytes for strong electrolyte what happens upon dilution like this is a strong electrolyte in this uh, electrolyte we have acid ha strong acid ha is there h plus and cl minus ions are there now i am adding water h plus and cl minus will have electrostatic force of attraction right because of addition of water what happens the same number of hcl molecules the same number of h plus and cl minus ions but because of addition of water because of dilution the distance between h plus and cl minus will be decreased or not because they are occupying now in greater volume that means interionic attraction is decreased or increased decreased increased 
because the same HCl is now present in a larger volume, full bottle if I add. If I add water, obviously interionic attraction decreases. For a strong electrolyte, if I do the dilution, the interionic attraction decreases because of that conductance increases. Because of that conductance increases. Now for weak electrolyte, what happens? For weak electrolyte, if I do the dilution, for weak electrolyte, we have Oswald's dilution law or not? Like HA, weak acid, dissociates to produce H plus and A minus. What is K? K is equal to C alpha into C alpha by C into 1 minus alpha. Limit alpha tending to 0. What is 1 minus alpha? That is equal to 1. So what is K? K is equal to C alpha square. K is equal to C alpha square. What is concentration? Number of moles by volume into alpha square. So alpha square is equals to K by N into V. So alpha is directly proportional to under root of V. So alpha degree of dissociation is going to be increasing if I increase the volume of the solution or not. If I do the dilution, obviously volume of solution increases. So alpha increases, alpha increases, more ions obtained, greater the number of ions, greater will be the conductance. So upon dilution, it doesn't matter whether it's a strong electrolyte or weak electrolyte, the conductance increases. For strong electrolyte, conductance increases. For strong electrolyte, conductance increases because of decrease in interionic attraction. For weak electrolytes, conductance increases because of because of increase in the degree of dissociation. Now let us talk of specific conductance. What is specific conductance? Specific conductance is the conductance offered by all the ions present in 1 centimeter cube of solution. In 1 centimeter cube of solution, number of ions is going to be decreased or increased if you do the dilution. Decreased. Decreased because you are doing dilution, the same number of ions are going to occupy larger volume. So in 1 ml or 1 centimeter cube volume, the number of ions are now low. So specific conductance will be decreasing. Molar conductance or equivalent conductance because of conduct because of dilution the concentration is decreasing, molarity is decreasing, normality decreasing. In the equivalent conductance or molar conductance expressions, you have normality and molarity in the numerator uh, in the denominator. So obviously molarity or normality they are going to be decreasing. So molar conductance or equivalent conductance that will be increasing. Clear or not? Yes. Yes or no? So you can just go with on increasing. Uh, the dilution, the conductance G increases. For strong electrolyte, interionic attraction decreases. So, conductance increases. For weak electrolytes, alpha directly proportional to root V. On dilution, specific conductance decreases. Because of dilution, number of ions in 1 ml of solution increases. On dilution, equivalent and molar conductance increases. Because with dilution, normality and molarity decreases. Right, students? Let us stop our discussion here. Next class, we will be looking at different other concepts. Thank you all, everyone. Bye. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.